Shepard measured a little bigger than expected at 6'3 in shoes while testing a 42-inch vertical leap in Chicago. That was a big eyebrow raiser. He also looked like the clear-cut best shooter in the draft every time he had a ball in his hands, both at the Combine and his Pro Day in Los Angeles this week. Several teams have said that Shepard's statistical profile with his incredible scoring efficiency, these numbers are just ridiculous, 56% from the field, 52% from three, and 83% from the line, combined with his excellent steal, block, and passing metrics that also show up on tape. It's not just the passing. It's not just the numbers. Um, Have ranked him as the number one prospect in their draft models, something that has surely caught the attention of the analytically inclined front office, such as the Houston Rockets. That's why I've been mentioning him going to Houston for so long, and here you see it from Gavoni. But with the premium that NBA teams are increasingly placing on perimeter shooting, it's hard to see Shepard dropping below the the top five with his fit in San Antonio alongside Victor Wembanyama, looking especially strong at the Spurs' number four pick. I know, I know, if you've been watching this channel throughout the draft, when I started off, the first time I talked about Reed Shepard, I said a lot of mean things. I said I didn't think his athleticism was going to translate. I didn't think that the things he was going to be able to do in college or that he was doing in college would be able to translate. And after that, I kind of repented and I said, hey, I was wrong about that. I've changed how I felt. And as the time has gone on, Ethan, I just get further and further away <laughs> from my initial takeaways. And once again, for those of you guys who may not know about that saga, if you will. Um, I watched the two games against Kentucky this year in full, uh, and those were... I didn't watch that many college games in full this year, so I put a lot of emphasis on them, and that was LSU. LSU. Right, and that was LSU versus Kentucky, where Reed Shepard didn't have his best games, and Rob Dillingham did have really good games. So that was where my knowledge base kind of came from, but as I dove into the rest of his tape, I just mentioned the insane efficiency that he has. And then on top of that, I'm talking about his athleticism, Ethan. I was proven way wrong on that. 42-inch vertical at the combine on top of other stuff. You know, his dad has a, you know, here's an interesting stat about his dad. Shout out to Film Room. He's been in the comments before, and he told me this. Reed Shepard's dad, I believe, okay, I'm butchering this completely, but it was either the Final Four or March Madness. Uh, at, when he played at Kentucky, his dad was a player at Kentucky. He mm. won an award in a tournament at San Antonio. I can't remember mm. if it was March Madness or just some, you know, like kind of beginning of the year tournament that you see in college a lot. Right. Um, I want to say it was March Madness, but y'all look that up. Reed Shepard's dad won an award when he was at Kentucky when he was in San Antonio. So that was a little fun Spurs connection there. Mm. But Ethan, that's my thoughts on Reed Shepard. I've just gotten higher and higher on him. And to be honest with you, I, I kind of see why people are giving him number one consideration. Um, I still would, would have Alex Sar and Versace ahead of him um, personally, but at the same time, I, I think he's going to be a very solid NBA player. Like he's somebody that like, he has such a high floor. And really I think his ceiling is as time has progressed for me, has also been higher than I expected. But the main thing, like I said, I mean, he's one of the most sure things in the draft, in my opinion. Now, he's an excellent player, and I feel like we disrespect him a lot, not even intentionally, just because we don't talk about him that much when we do a lot of these draft profiles. And I think that's a couple reasons why we haven't, is because we were both pretty high on Rob Dillingham, who played with him at Kentucky and played point guard, as well as Stefan Castle, who's also a point guard. Um I, I, I don't know about you, Jude. I still would definitely take Stefan Castle over Reed Shepard just in terms of fit, versatility, and what he would bring to our team defensively. Um, but but you can't deny what Reed Shepard's able to do. I mean, that efficiency is crazy at 56%, 52 from three. Um, I, I know he's, 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 he's got a, a lot of heart. A lot of people compared him to Derek White defensively, what he's able to do just out, out of sheer hustle at six foot three with that frame. Um, but I, I wouldn't be upset if we took him at four. I really wouldn't if he's available. I think Houston would take him at three if they don't trade back. Personally, I think that's just what would happen, and we would be be left off with Castle or Dillingham, whoever at four. Um, but if he's there, man, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think I still go. I think I still go Castle personally. 
I, I have Shepard above Castle. I would rather take Shepard than Castle. Wow. And and when I say this, like there's like a it's like this much of a difference. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's and that's really with a lot of these guys. I would say maybe Rob's fell a little bit for me. Um, Topich with the injury concerns, that's something, you know, that's also a, a little bit of an interesting thing. But here's the thing with Shepard for me. I just think, and it's it, this isn't even Stefan Castle's fault, but we've seen Shepard. I mean, and, and what's crazy now that I think about it, he kind of played the two a lot at times, mm-hmm. but still the amount of playmaking and like straight up point guard tape, you know, like when you watch it, you're like, that's a point guard play. He's running this out of a pick and roll. You know, he's, he's, he's orchestrating the set, you know, like he's, even if it's not just a set, he's orchestrating, you know, whatever assist ends up happening. Um, he's, we've already seen what he can do at point guard where we haven't necessarily seen that from castle. And as we've talked about in other episodes, that's not necessarily castle's fault because of the role that he took on at UConn. Um, but because I've seen more from Shepard in that position, I don't think, you know, the only thing, the thing that I would give castle is his frame. Castle has a better frame than Reed, but also the combine measurements and how he did in all the athleticism drills, if you will, stuff that whether that's his vertical, you know, or, or whatever it may be, the way that he tested physically, you know, that wiped away all of those concerns. It's still not like there's going to be a giant drop off. He's just not as big as as Stefan but the shooting splits his playmaking ability the defense and the fact that like I said we kind of saw a little bit more flashes of that in his position and also the fact that he was able to do that like with all of these point guards like he comes in with Rob Dillingham um with number 12 Reeves I'm forgetting his first name I know Drew's in the chat he already reminded me of it one episode a while back um and then DJ Wagner as well, like he was the one who emerged. And when that class came in, you know, if you had to rank, okay, who do you think is going to be a top pick? That was not Reed Shepard. And he also went on the podcast P with Paul George. And he talked about, he was like, it's so crazy that I'm getting number one consideration now because I just went into the season looking to have fun. And we talked about DJ Wagner and how high he was. You know, he was basically in Reed Shepard's position preseason. Mm-hmm. So I think... The way that he performed and the flashes he showed, you know, with all of the guards around him and also like Kentucky's a top tier program, too. I know they weren't the same as UConn this year, obviously, but it's once again, all of this is really like it is not a giant difference. But me personally, all of the things I just said, Antonio Reeves. Thank you, Drew. Thank you, Drew. Um, That's why I have him a little bit higher than Castle personally. I'm I'm not mad at it, and I really can't argue against it. I think at the end of the day, it's about taste, and then who's available. I mean, is it, really what it comes down to. And I would also say that I think it's much more likely that Stefan Castle is available at four than Reed Shepard. We already we just I mean, there's the Houston Rockets, and they're analytically inclined, and he's just popping off all the charts for all the analytics. As I've said this whole time, I really think that's what's going to happen. But if he is there at four, I would. I would uh, run to the, like Lou said with Stefan Castle, I would run to the, the phone, whatever. I don't, you know, we don't give him the pick actually. We call him, right? <laughs> I don't know how it works anymore, honestly. I'm pretty sure. No, we, we definitely call them because Brian Wright, there was the video of Brian Wright saying Victor Wembenyama last year on the phone. Right. That's right. But any final thoughts on Reed Shepard, Ethan? I just want to pull this comment up real quick from Mike Ingles, throwing shade at Kentucky players in the playoffs. I think he's alluding to Carl Anthony Towns with that one. Tyrese, uh, though. <laughs> no, Tyrese Maxey? Yeah, I was just yeah. thinking about the, the heroics he had in some games, even though they ended up losing. No, for sure, for sure. For sure. He he, he is a Dallas Mavericks fan, hence the oh, Carl I Anthony see. Towns hatred. The slander. Yeah, he's in the well, thick of the series right now. They're... They're probably going to pull it out, but Wolves in seven. <laughs> Remember, you said Pacers in seven last week. Did I say that? Yeah, but it was just it, you. Were, it was obvious you were kind of joking about it. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I was, <laughs> I was gonna say I don't think I would have said that, but Mez says Kentucky guards under Calipari become better when they get to the NBA. He says Calipari is a terrible offensive coach. <laughs> um, 
I mean, I'm sure that over the past couple years, you can criticize Calipari, but his track record also speaks for itself. But more importantly, the first part of your comment is 100% true. We, When Lou was on, we brought up the graphic of the comparisons between Rob Dillingham and Tyrese Maxey. Tyrese Maxey was the sub-30% three-point shooter coming into the NBA, and we've seen what he's become since. Right on. Yes, sir. Drew also says that. He says Kentucky guards historically pan out well in the draft. It's true. 